Now, our next guest has written for Pakistan's Friday Times, and her best-selling book, The Diary of a Social Butterfly, is based on her satirical column from the paper. I sat down with journalist Moni Mohsen to ask about writing in a turbulent country, and we began by chatting about how and why she uses satire to tackle difficult topics. While I'm talking about some pretty sort of mm -hmm. difficult subjects like homophobia, like forced marriages, like um, um, creeping fundamentalism, uh, our terrible relations with India, um, we, I still manage to do it, if you do it in a light-hearted way, people can relate to it more openly, I think. Whereas the minute you start criticizing these things, immediately people's hackles rise up. Mm. This way, in, in a strange sort of way, you kind of defang them first mm -hmm. by making them laugh. Mm -hmm. And hopefully then you make them think as well. Because the thing with satire is it must leave an aftertaste. There must be something more to it than just trying to make you laugh. It has to hold up some kind of mirror to you. It has to expose some kind of truth. And hopefully try and bring about some change. And on the flip side, typically when women tend to use satire in their writing or they, they write social commentaries, uh, their work's often labelled as chick lit and, mm. and marketed as so. Have mm. you found this to be a problem? Have you found it difficult to be able to access all audiences? You know, in a way it's been a it's it's a it's a mixed blessing because when I when people pick up the book because it looks like chick lit, they will still read it. Mm -hmm. They will read it thinking it's something else. And hopefully a message will filter in because even if you read it as chiclet, there are things which will make them pause and think about themselves and their situations. Like a lot of ladies, for example, in Pakistan say to me, oh, I loved your work, I loved it so much, it reminded me so much of so-and-so, so-and-so. But in fact, very few of them have come up to me, but there have been a few who have come up and said, it reminded me so much of myself. I read it and I thought, oh my God, this is me. <laughs> and although she's read it like chiclet, it has, in the end, made her look at it as something else. Do you think so. there's maybe been some people who haven't read it though because they might see it as, as chick lit, you know, potentially men, for example? You know, the funny thing is, it started off as a column in a newspaper. Yes. And because it was at the back of a newspaper, a serious newspaper, um, and because it didn't have a pink cover and it didn't have butterflies on the cover, people read it just as a satirical column. And a lot of my readers and a lot of my followers on Twitter are male. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the West, most of my readers are female. In Pakistan and mm -hmm. India, most of them are male. Do you think because of your work, people outside Pakistan are now seeing a different side to the country, a Pakistan that's more open, more liberal? I think, yes, that is true. Uh, and more in, most of all in India. Uh, really? Because I had, I had a quite a different sort of reaction to what I thought I would have in India to my book. On the one hand, it's been very popular and I'm very grateful to Indian readers for um, taking it to their hearts and for buying it in such <laughs> large numbers. But on the other hand, I was surprised when they said to me, oh really, you people wear jeans in Pakistan? <laughs> oh really, you people go to mixed parties in Pakistan? And I thought to myself, hello, <laughs> where do you think we're living? Because there's this kind of, um, you know, if you only read the headlines and you never go and visit Pakistan, there is this feeling that all uh, all that is um, negative, etc., is, is uh, you know what is predominant in Pakistan. You just have bearded men wielding guns uh, in Pakistan. But in fact, it's a place like any other. Mm -hmm. There are people, you know, going about their daily lives. There are men who are desperate for their daughters to get educated. There are people getting married. There are people dying. There, you know, it's just like any other place in the world. In terms of women being educated, I want to pick up on what you said there. What are your thoughts on Malala Yousafzai and, and what she's done for Pakistan's plight? I met her in, in, uh, in London and um, I think the biggest price that she has paid has been that she has had to leave her home mm -hmm. and I think she really misses her home. Um, and she has you know, brought the plight of, of um, Pakistani women, particularly in the north where uh, the Taliban have destroyed schools, etc., to uh, the world's attention. Do you have hope for the future of Pakistan? I do, because most people in Pakistan are hard-working, aspirational um, people who want to get on with their lives, who want to be a part of the, of the bigger world, who want to have good relations with their, uh, with their neighbours, and who want to live in a free and, and just society. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if, if enough people want that, then they make it happen.